What's up, what's up, what's up? We're back. Episode 31. This is 31 days of Ask J. We got 59 left, right? 90 days. I'm committing to answer your questions, five questions per day. If you hashtag Ask J on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And my team will get me these questions. So, you know we start off every episode with a motivational message of the day. The Ask J motivational message of the day. So, I'm going to pull this one from our new talking points and our new message for everyone, which is called Wealth DNA. So, in the J. Morrison Academy, we have expanded past real estate. So obviously, you know I do way more than real estate. And we are talking and teaching and giving the message of how you actually build wealth, but how you activate your wealth DNA. Many of us, including myself, were not born to the rich or super rich. We weren't born to the top 10% of families in America. And so we didn't inherit the wealth DNA. Therefore, we must activate our own. And one of the first components of having wealth DNA is understanding that education is your advantage. Wealthy people, right, that's our first D, is, in, the, in the DNA is wealth disciplines. And the first discipline, the first strand of our wealth DNA is understanding that the more you know about anything, the more advantage you have over everyone else. This is what I taught today in Baltimore High School, in Dunbar High School in Baltimore. I taught 12th, 11th, and 9th graders these principles and understanding that, yes, knowledge is our power, but knowledge is our advantage. That's how you can make more money in a certain field than someone else because you just know more, right? If you know more, say we're playing basketball and you know more about the game, about the rules of the game, you know that you can Euro step and it's not a walk, then you actually have an advantage over someone else that doesn't get that point. Or you know you could jump stop. I remember when that first came out, he were not never jump stopping and someone figured out you could bounce the ball and jump stop and it's not a walk, it's not a travel. That was knowing the rules and taking advantage of them. Same in real estate. If you know that you can purchase a property using your Section 8 voucher or your VA voucher or a voucher for a disability, that you can use that. And if you know that you can use that voucher with a co-borrower who may be making 15000 a year working at Walmart and maybe your cousin, another co-borrower, and all three or four or five of y'all can come together as co-borrowers and purchase a four-family house for 3.5% down, FHA, down to a 580s, 560 credit score. If you knew that, you'd have the advantage in home ownership. If you knew you could get secure credit cards to boost your credit, you'd have the advantage in how to boost your credit. If you knew about getting a Dunn's number for your business and get built business credit, you'd have an advantage in building business credit. Which is why in the new JMA, we want to teach you all these wealth building principles in our six wealth areas of expertise, which is credit, residential real estate, commercial real estate, business startup, business mastery, and stocks and finance. And we have our stocks and finance expert behind the camera. And, um, you know, I'm happy to almost bring him aboard. He didn't sign his contract yet, so I can't say he's official. But, uh, you know, I appreciate the King Taewon, and he's going to be doing a great job for us when he comes on board. So, Tay, I want to get to our questions. You know, like I know, education is our advantage. You are an expert at stocks and finance and retirement funds and all that kind of stuff. So we look forward to hearing that more from you and JMA on the stock market. But today is Ask Jay. It's my day. Let's get to our first question. All right. First question is from Anthony Baker on Facebook. And what I... <laughs> the question is, are you voting next year, Jay? I am if there's a candidate that agrees with amending the 13th amendment to take the slavery clause out that's my big non-negotiable right so in our dna is wealth disciplines wealth non-negotiables and wealth areas of expertise dna so but one of my life dnas is that there's no way we can live in a country as white black hispanic that didn't even make sense to say white black and hispanic like we use two colors and then use a nationality right as africans as europeans and as Latin Americans, or whatever we want to call it, as anybody, there's no reason we should be in America where slavery was abolished except you commit a crime. The 13th Amendment says in our American Constitution to this day that the, basically the Africans or anyone who was enslaved were free from slavery, it's abolished, you can't be enslaved unless you commit a crime. Which is why we have the convict leasing system in our prisons where you could be made to work for free or made to work in voluntary labor. 
So for me to vote, I need one of these candidates. Once we roll this Black Tea Party out, which will be very soon, one of these Hillary, Donald, I don't care who it is, the one that says I'm willing to abolish, permanently abolish slavery without no exception, that is at least a potential candidate that Jay Morrison would endorse and vote for, among some other things as well. They can't be like the crazy Donald Trump stuff he'd be saying, but it all got to add up. But the person that is willing to understand that, no slavery, no exception. I don't care what you do, no exception for slavery. And that's what we're standing for under the Black Tea Party. And you can actually get on our email list at blackteaparty.org. Next question. Next question is from April Jacobs um, from Facebook. Hey, Queen. And the question is, is, is this the best time to flip houses or buy and hold? It depends on what market you're in. My easy answer would be buy and hold. Because nationally it's a buyer's market and prices are low and interest rates are low, it's a great time to buy while the interest rates are low as opposed to wait until they go to 8 9% and now you're holding, paying more money. It's a great time to buy while property values are still at all-time lows so you have a better chance for appreciation and gaining equity in your property. So yes, it's more of a buy and hold market for you to buy now while things are still a little hairy in the financial market and in the real estate market and be able to cash out 10, 20, 30 years later and build that family legacy. And get the rental income and the residual cash flow from your properties along with the appreciation plus the tax advantages, which is why education is our advantage. Do we know. Next question is from Tawana Smith from Facebook. Can you break down the 65% formula, please? <laughs> Tawana, Tawana, Tawana. Yes, I can, Queen. So, 65% purchase ratio in real estate is this. Whatever your all-in costs are, meaning your acquisition costs, renovation costs, any liens, any hard costs, and we also include our carrying costs at times, right? So whatever your all-in costs are for doing a deal, those all-in costs should not exceed, that means be more than 65% of the after repair value or market value of the home. So if the home's gonna have repairs, what's that value gonna be after it's repaired? And your all-in cost should not be more than 65% of that value. How you find it is you divide your all-in cost by your market value. So if your all-in costs are 65,000 and the market value is 100,000, you go 65,000 divided by 100,000. It's gonna say 0.65. Move the decimal two spaces over, that's 65%, you know you're in good shape for a flip. That number can increase to 70, 80, maybe 85, um, depending if it's a buy and hold, depending on what kind of end buyer you have, a bunch of different scenarios, you know, variables, but at least you know when you use that formula, at least you know where you're at per ratio, per your investment to the market value. The closer you are to 65, the better you are um, being, but the better you are in your investment in general, but, but the more better chance you have for qualifying for hard money, private partners, in other ways of investing. That 65 number is a safe spot, it's a sweet spot. Next question. We have a Twitter question from at Carrie Classic. She says, who's your favorite shark on Shark Tank? Um, that's a good question. That's a good question. Oh, uh, man, so tough. I mean, huh. I mean, Damon John's story is most like my story, I could say. Mm -hmm. Um. And I have a lot of respect for Damon and what he's doing as uh, in his brand and business. I, kind of, I know a lot of his colleagues, and I like how he moves. I like how Mark Cuban moves, though, as well. Um, I mean, Barbara Corkin is a beast. She's, she is what she is. <coughs> she is who she is. Ah. And the other guy with the kind of bald head, I forgot his name. He's pretty tough. I like, I like his personality. But I'm going to say it's a tie between Damon John and Mark Cuban. I'm gonna give Damon a little bit edge, a little bit edge. Good question. And the last question is from Instagram at Left All Estates. What is or what was your biggest sacrifice in the real estate game that you've had to make, whether currently or in the past? And how did you handle that sacrifice? What is the biggest sacrifice that I've made in the real estate game? I would say the biggest sacrifice that I've made in the real estate game and in my professional career is 
deciding to put my passions and my purpose over my profits. To be honest with you, I could be a lot more well off. I probably could be a lot more popular. Um, I was really at a point within my career of doing TV with NBC, of being a celebrity realtor with Sotheby's International Realty, and just that space that I was in. I was at a point I really could have took off and crossed over, but it was something in my heart that was pulling me to go and teach my community and go be vocal and be loud and be assertive about, excuse me, empower my community. And it was tough because I saw, I knew where I could go. And, I, and, I, and every part of us wants to be selfish, self-preservation. And I know I could make a lot more money just shucking and jiving and, you know, being the crossover black guy, being the token black guy on these shows or in these real estate companies or et cetera. And I took a hit intentionally because um, I knew I had a bigger calling and a bigger purpose. And God called me for that calling and that purpose. And that purpose is um, to empower, to inspire, to educate um, you know, our people, my people. And that is our underserved people in general, the African-American community, minority community, Hispanic community, uh, people that are oppressed, those who are poor, those who are in prison, and those who are sick. And um, that's just my call of duty as a Christian, as a God-fearing man, as just morally correct, somebody aligned with the universe outside of any religion. Right? I'm really on the fence about religions. But um, that definitely was a sacrifice to my real estate business. Because, and even the time I put into starting the Jay Morrison Academy and these mentorship platforms, doing these videos, like, I could be doing other stuff. And the time I put into learning how to build a school, like I have a real school, and we're working on national accreditation and FAFSA and all that kind of stuff. The time I put into that, and, and it's, it's a great model, but I could have just been doing real estate the whole entire time and not focusing on all the nuances and customer service and videos and marketing and branding and I intentionally took profits and revenues and investments that were going to go into real estate and actually go into Cleveland real estate at the time and I said what where else could my money better serve me and my people and that's when I started the Jay Morrison Academy so that was a sacrifice to my real estate career but I believe it's going to all pay off socially and um you know i feel like i'll just reap the benefits of it from doing the right thing so that's that and that was five check out my pen yeah yeah you know what i'm saying so um i'm all day just representing you know what i'm saying who we are leading by example um jma stuff ymc stuff moving our community forward moving our culture forward I love y'all, appreciate y'all watching the video. Make sure you subscribe to the video. Make sure you share the video. Make sure you like the video. Make sure you comment below. Thank y'all. Any real estate coaching, go to jmrepartners.com. They really sponsor this, my real estate company, J. Morrison Real Estate Partners. Shout out to Brandon Tosin, Greg, Reunikia, the whole team from Chris Darden. Um, make sure you're on a waiting list for the J. Morrison Academy, jmorrisonacademy.com. Five new courses, six overall courses, credit, real estate, res residential real estate, commercial real estate, business startup, business mastery, stocks and finance, Tavon behind the camera. Thank you, King. And I'll see y'all episode 32 tomorrow, 90 days straight. Peace.